Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be talking about contrast and uh, specifically comparing what does the same drawing look like when it is drawn using three different levels of contrast. Now because we've got Halloween coming up I decided to use a uh, skull as my example drawing, but let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now just to do something a little different, I've decided instead of using my typical Dixon Ticonderoga, which is just an ordinary kind of writing pencil, uh, I'm going to use instead one of these very hard leaded kind of uh, artist's pencils that you can get at an art shop. This one made by the Prismacolor company and unfortunately the actual number of it has sort of worn away. I can see a H there which I think just stands for the hard uh, lead area of their uh, range of artists pencils and the reason that I've chosen this is because I want to create a very low contrast uh, version of this drawing which is to say uh, a drawing in which the darks are not very dark. Um, and so uh, in comparison to the white of the page you have very little contrast. The, they're pretty too, you know, they're so close together that uh, you're not struck by um, uh, any big particularly um, dramatic contrast between the two. And normally, um, you know, when I'm drawing I'm usually going for at least some level of contrast and you're going to see uh, probably in the middle drawing my usual uh, approach, which is uh, a sort of a balance between lights and darks. Um, but I thought it would be fun, in a way, to, to use a drawing style that I would never normally use, or almost never, uh, which is this sort of um, misty, low contrast, uh, sort of uh, kind of deliberately pale uh, drawing style, and just see what does it look like, and do you get an interesting sort of ghostly effect? You know, there's something delicate about a drawing that is low contrast, and uh, I suppose the key thing art teachers would uh, say to you about all of this is that uh, you want it to be a choice. Um, if all of your drawings are low contrast uh, out of a, a kind of tendency to be mm, timid, let's say, with your drawing uh, approach, then maybe you would need to explore beefing up the contrast, forcing yourself to go a little darker. Uh, certainly if, you're, if your goal is um, you know, realism or sort of photorealism, representational uh, drawing. That you know, if that's what you're trying to get to, uh, beefing up the contrast helps a lot uh, with that because that's what we see in real life. You know, uh, darks are very dark uh, normally, uh, and it, it helps to make an object seem more three-dimensional. I think you're going to find that with this one, uh, by keeping the contrast low, that it will be a little bit flat. It's not going to pop off the page. Anyway, I don't want this video to go on and on forever with me blabbing, <laughs> as I normally do, so I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest of this in time lapse, and then what I'm going to do is scan this into my computer, print it out, and we're going to see a second version, and even a third version over here, uh, and uh, you're going to see me do a you know more sort of balanced contrast version uh, after I'm done with this. But let's go ahead and finish this one up. Okay, so that's it for my uh, low contrast version. You may have noticed that I couldn't resist pulling out my normal pencil. It was just so low contrast uh, using this hard leaded pencil that uh, I felt it just looked unfinished. And if you looked at some of the drawings that I did when I was younger, uh, you might see a fair number of drawings like this, very pale and washed out. And in my case, it had to do really with being a little too timid and not having the guts, shall we say, to really push down on that pencil and create more contrast. Well, that's exactly what you're going to see me doing on the next version. So give me a moment, I'm going to scan this into my computer, uh, print it out, probably like I said, all three skulls, one next to the other, and then we'll be uh, ready to move on to the second version of this drawing. Okay, so you can see I've printed out, uh, through the miracle of modern technology, able to cut and paste and get the uh, exact same skull there side by side. And this time I'm going to be using what I call the two pencil method, uh, this sort of ordinary writing pencil and then a uh, black colored pencil. I tend to use the Prisma color. My 
uh, trusty black Prismacolor. Uh, so let's go ahead and zoom in, and I'm going to start uh, uh, beefing up the contrast in this um, sort of secondary version of the drawing. Now I'm probably going to also use the uh, uh, number two Dixon Ticonderoga as I uh, add further contrast to this drawing, but I think I'm just going to jump in right now with the black colored pencil to uh, begin to show you as quickly as possible what a big difference it makes when you uh, increase the contrast in your drawings. Now, uh, I, uh, you know, part of my idea with this video was not to say you should always uh, use high contrast in every drawing you do. Um, you know me, I don't like to uh, come up with these big sort of laws of uh, art or creativity in that way. But uh, certainly, if there's anyone else who has uh, that same tendency that I had, when I was younger, uh, which was to make a sort of a hesitant drawing that didn't have much in the way of contrast. Um, hopefully this uh, video can help encourage you to um, at least try increasing the contrast in some of your drawings. Again, you know, as I said, depending on what you're going for, depending on what um, look you prefer. Uh, but certainly when I'm creating a drawing that is meant to sort of pop off the page, have a sort of a three-dimensional aspect to it, then certainly I'm looking at the dark areas uh, of the drawing and saying, can we push that a little further? And I, I think what happens is when you make the darks darker, the lighter areas somehow almost seem to get lighter just by way of contrast, or they have a, a, an added power. But like I said, there could probably be circumstances in which you want an illustration that's more um, washed out like this. One that comes to mind is a sort of a foggy, like an illustration of a foggy day uh, in the forest or whatever, and all of the trees, um, almost none of them have any dark black to them. They're all sort of very, uh, very pale shades. Uh, of gray that uh, suggest a misty morning. In any case, let's go ahead and uh, kick it into time lapse uh, once again with my old friend, old man time lapse. What's with all the skulls? Don't you think it's a little morbid? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add as much contrast um, as I would normally do for this second uh, version of the drawing, and then it's going to be kind of fun for me to try with the third uh, one over here to the right to actually go further and do more contrast than I would normally do. And then we'll be able to compare all three of them. So give me a moment here, I'm going to finish up this drawing, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so you can certainly see the benefits of uh, making your drawing more high contrast in terms of it looking uh, more three-dimensional. This is probably more typical of what I would normally do if asked uh, to do a you know, realistic drawing of a skull. And it is sort of uh, interesting to see how radically different the, this first drawing looks. Uh, compared to the second one. I noticed that I actually had to come in and do a lot of gray um, in order to get this sort of full range of tones from dark to light and all the different uh, shades in between. Uh, but with this third and final one, I am going to be really sort of challenging myself to work in a uh, style that I don't normally work in, which is, you know, very bold contrast, lots of blacks, uh, whites, maybe very little gray in between. We'll see how it goes, but let's go ahead and move on to that third version of the drawing. So with this last one, um, just for the fun of it, I am actually going to go in here and uh, completely blacken this in. And uh, in an interesting way, I think you can, when you go super high contrast with uh, very bold blacks and almost no grays uh, in between the blacks uh, and the whites, in a funny way, it sort of goes back to being a little flat looking again. Um, so there's a sort of interesting circularity there from the first illustration to the last one. Um, but I think uh, uh, I'm going to be a little less concerned with, you know, the illusion of light and shadow 
and maybe more interested in creating a stylized version of this drawing. Um, because, you know, I could just have, I could have scanned this one in and printed it out and then just kept going darker and darker, but uh, I don't think that would be very interesting. So let's go ahead. I'm going to um, continue with this weird new hybrid style that I'm uh, uh, going to try to invent almost on the fly here. And uh, I'll be back and tell you what I uh, thought about it as I went along. And um, then uh, we'll <clears throat> pull back so that we can compare all three of the illustrations at once. All right, well, here we go with a, a style of drawing that I almost never do, but it was fun for me to uh, push myself in a different direction. This, to me, looks a little more like a uh, like a t-shirt design, maybe, or a tattoo. It uh, has some of the elements of, of cartooning, which is to say a, a bold black outline. Uh, sometimes you're forced to simplify, like here this is quite a subtle area of different uh, grays, and I just had to sort of say, no, we're going to go straight from bold black to uh, more or less white over here. And uh, it almost has a kind of a retro look to me. I wonder if uh, anyone else has that same uh, vibe when they see this illustration. But let's go ahead and refocus the camera so we can see all three of them side by side. Okay, so there you see all three drawings. Of course, uh, we see at this point that the... Uh, low contrast version of the drawing has the kind of drawback of being a little hard to see, especially from a distance. Uh, and by contrast, this version, very easy to see from a distance. That's why, like I said, it works great on a t-shirt or some sort of sign that needs to be uh, understood from far away. In any case, I hope you found this uh, video interesting and gave you some ideas about how you might use uh, contrast or challenge yourself as I did. Uh, to use even bolder styles of uh, contrast than you ever have before. Or indeed, if you tend to use very high contrast stuff, maybe take on the challenge of going low contrast for a drawing and see how that works out for you. Uh, but before I go, I always like to say thank you to anyone who has chosen to support me by getting any of my books, like the Two Pencil Method. This one definitely uh, gives you the sort of technique that you saw on display here. Uh, the Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and Mastering Manga, my series of books 1, 2, and 3, uh, that show you how to draw in a manga style. But I think it is high time that I laid down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.